Hey everybody, welcome back to Prepper Junkie. Today on the table we have a fantastic firearm to go over with you today. This is the SIG MCX Spear LT chambered in 5.56. There's a lot to go over. Let's get this one started. If you're going to carry a gun, you need a great holster. I personally use VetterHolsters.com for my concealed carry, for my out the waistband carry, and I use their gun belt also. They have over 450 models in stock, 50 different colors, 100% made in the US of A, 30 day money back guarantee, and a lifetime warranty. What more could you ask for? Check out VetterHolsters.com. All right, folks, as I said, this is the Sig Spear. This has only been out for a few months. They are stupidly hard to get a hold of, um, but we are lucky enough to have one to go over with you today. So um, let's go over some of the features. Um, let's go over a slight comparison to the predecessor, the Virtus. Yeah, let's start at the back. We're gonna go over the new stock that they have on here. It's very minimalistic. It's it's actually a fixed stock, so you, there is no room to extend this. So if this does not work for you, um, this stock may not be for you. It does have a nice rubber butt pad on the back here. You got cutie sling mounts right here. You have a slight cheek rest right here. Again, it's very minimal, minimalistic. It's not like a big beefy uh, stock or anything like that. The good news is it is attached with a 1913 pick rail. So if you don't like the fact that it is a fixed stock and you wish to change this, uh, you, any stock that has that 1913 uh, adapter will uh, fit on the end of here, which is very helpful. And it's just one torque screw right here. Take that off, you can switch it. So very cool. Obviously the other really cool thing is, obviously this is a piston system uh, in this gun. So uh, there is no buffer tube or anything like that back here. So you can have a folding stock, which uh, SIG have put on this for us. And so it does fold, uh, there's a button here, and then you pull up just slightly, close that over, and it will lock into place like so. Now it's not locked locked, you can still easily pull it, but you've got to use a little bit of force. I do like that, so it's not going to swing around on you or anything like that. It kind of locks in place, just put it back out like so. Um, nice stock, no wobble in it, it feels pretty good. Um, uh, again, I've shot this a bunch. I'm not sure how I feel about the, the cheek weld being so small. Um, we'll see how that goes over in time, but a uh, very cool little minimalist stock if you like. Move along, obviously you have an ambi-charging handle right here. These work really nice. It's got some nice serrations on the inside here so you can get a nice grip on that charging handle. So very, very nice indeed. You've got the upper and the lower receiver here uh, that is not interchangeable with AR-15 lowers or uppers, nothing like that. This is uh, the set you would need to run this gun. So you do have very similar to almost identical AR-15 controls uh, and features. So you have your brass deflector here, obviously your forward assist right there. And this is actually polymer, so that's very interesting. Again, keep, it's helping keep uh, this gun a little lighter, and we'll go over that in just a little bit about the weight. Um, you'll notice here it does have an ambi safety. Ambi safeties for me on any kind of uh, fighting rifle is a must. I love ambi safeties. Um, now, compared to the the Virtus, this does it is completely um, ambidextrous, so you do have this little lever right here, which if you pull the charging handle with the bolt back, push up, locks in place, and if you push down, on that little lever, it will also drop the bolt forward. Very nice indeed. You do have your mag release, obviously right here, and it does have some nice texturing on it. Flip to the other side, you've got your other bolt and catch and release right there. With your, and then you've got your paddle, ping pong paddle. And then moving down, you do have another mag release right there. So very nice indeed, completely ambi, as I said. So very, very nice. Moving to the lower, you've got a really nice angled grip right here. It's not rubber over mold, but it does have some nice texturing. Little storage compartment on the bottom to add whatever you would like in there. QD sling attachments on either side of the lower as well right here. And then you come up to the trigger. Trigger right out of the box. So two stage trigger, you got your first stage, a little bit of take up. Nice clean audible break. 
And then for the reset, a little bit of let out, just a little bit. Very positive and tactile reset. Very nice trigger right out of the box from SIG. Well done. Okay, moving to the magwell. It is flared out for easy insertion of your mags. It does take standard AR-15 mags and it does come with a 30 round P mag. Um, so there it does come with that. So very nice indeed. Now moving to back up to the rail, excuse me, to the upper, you'll notice that we have a 1913 pick rail that goes all the way along here. So plenty of storage space for anything you want. Now at first glance, you're like, oh, is it, it kind of looks like it's a monolithic upper, right? But um, you will see a slight change in the color variation. And so the upper receiver uh, rail goes to right here. Now that's that's really nice because if you know an AR-15, it's typically right here. And if you're attaching, um, you know, LPVOs or whatever, you've got to be careful you don't bridge that gap. Um, but you don't have that problem with this because it is so long, so you don't have to worry about that. And then moving up to the rail system, you've got lots of M-lock slots all the way around here, tons of space to add whatever you may need. To take this handguard off, it's slightly different than the MCX, uh, excuse me, the Virtus, uh, you would typically just pop out the front takedown pin and you'd be able to slide it off. This one is different, it does have a, a screw on this side and a screw on that side that you would need to take out and then just lift the handguard up. It is a return to zero handguard. So if you run like a D-ball or something on the front here, when you put this back on, your point of aim should not change. So and for, I have not tested that theory out yet or, or what they stated out yet, but I'm sure they are true to their word. Now, underneath this handguard, as I said, this is a piston system. Um, so you do have a uh, gas, adjustable gas block right here, two adjustments, uh, normal and adverse. Underneath the piston system, you do have a cold hammer forged barrel. It's a one and seven twist and it is chrome lined. And then you come up to a stumpy, <laughs> Uh, flat three prong flash harder at the front here. This is it's an interesting, it's designed for SIG suppressors. I don't have a SIG suppressor to test out uh, being suppressed, unfortunately, um, but obviously you can change this out if you want to. But I've, I've heard that the SIG suppressors, the new ones are really good. Again, I haven't tested that out yet, but uh, one thing to note with the three prong, three prong suppressor uh, excuse me, three prong flash hider being that short is it's not going to mitigate flash as well as longer three prong flash hiders. So uh, just bear that in mind, but these guns are designed to be suppressed. Um, so if you have a suppressor on there, it shouldn't really be an issue. But if you're gonna be shooting like this um, and you, you want that flash suppression, these are not going to be the best for the job. Now, one of the things I like to do as well is if you watch the channel, you like to know that I, excuse me, you, you know that I like to do a wiggle test and I like to see if there's any play between the upper and lower receiver. Just check those tolerances. It does not f affect the gun in any way, shape or form. It's just something I like to do because it kind of bugs me. There's a little bit of play, uh, but not much at all in there. Now, the overall quality construction on the outside of this gun is top top notch. It's very nicely done. I think the color, it's not, again, it's it's multiple different colors, but I think it looks fantastic. Um, and I, I, again, I think they've done everything right. All the features that you want for me on a combat gun or a, you know, a fighting gun or however you want to put it is here. Everything is ambi. Is it a necessity? No. Is it nice to have? Absolutely. Um, so I do like that. Now to take this gun down, it's the same way as any AR-15, even though this is not an AR-15, you just take out the front and back pin, you just pop them out, we'll just do the back pin. Take that one out, and it will just look like, you know, you're taking down an AR-15, obviously we're not. So you do have that excellent trigger in here, as I said, from SIG, and then you can see the movement of your, your bolt catch and release right here. Now, take out the charging handle and the piston and bolt, let's put that down. So this is your ambi charging handle again, right out of the box. It's a nice charging handle. Um, yep, no problems with that. So you do have your piston system and your bolt right here, as you can see. Um, and then obviously, you know, just give it a quick once over, make sure everything looks good. Everything looks great. But that is their new updated system from the MCX. So uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is when you look at the top here, there's two little holes in the top of the receiver and it's actually it looks like it looks like roll pins i'm not sure exactly what is down there but it looks like roll pins on either side now that's for the, the charging handle to latch onto uh, and grip on either side so it's not grabbing onto the aluminum 
uh, you know, onto the actual receiver here, upper receiver, it's grabbing onto those rolls. So I guess if they ever, I guess it's just reinforcing it. Maybe if it wears out, you can just replace them. But very interesting that they added that there. Now, uh, let's talk about shooting uh, this gun. Now, I did shoot more through this gun because um, I felt like it's a newer gun um, that people are very, obviously, very interested in. And I wanted to shoot a little more than I normally do in my first reviews of a gun. So I've got about 500 rounds through this. Uh, no problems whatsoever. Um, the trigger is really nice. You can get up and running pretty fast with it. But also if you want to do those single, more accurate shots, as I said, really nice two-stage trigger. But shooting it was great. Uh, no problems whatsoever. It's an exceptionally well-built gun. Uh, absolutely feature-rich. Um, compared to the MCX, uh, to the Virtus, you know, I've shot the Virtus. I like the Virtus. The Virtus was very top heavy and this has shedded about, you know, a pound plus in weight over the uh, the Virtus. So it does feel more of a balanced rifle than the MCX. So I will definitely give it that. Now, is it worth upgrading from the Virtus to uh, the Spear? That's totally up to you. I think this has some really nice upgrades on there, um, but should you upgrade, absolutely up to you. If you're in the market for a 5.56 rifle that is not an AR-15, 110% check this gun out if you have that extra cash to spare. Um, I really, really don't think you would be disappointed. It's an extremely fine rifle, extremely well made, um, and yeah. All right, folks, that is pretty much it from me. If you have any questions, any comments, please ask them below. I'm happy to help out wherever I can. And that's it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.